All right, so I had food poisoning yesterday, as stupid as that is. If you look around my gym, you'll see that I've got this uh, Smith machine that I bought, obviously. I was gonna build one, and then I found this one for, I guess it's the equivalent of like 80 US dollars. He also threw in some extra floor mats and some other stuff for free. So for 80 bucks, it was cheaper to buy this one than to build my own. And then I bought this Smith machine. This is an American made Cybex, actually old school, made in USA. Awesome. I love this thing. Super smooth. I paid $300 for this out of a gym that was transitioning to more of a CrossFit focus. Uh, everything else though, just about everything else I built, the leg developer I built, the lat tower I built, the squat rack I built, same with the, the chalk bowl, this safety bench, all this stuff I built. And then at one point I had all this scrap steel, like big thick pieces of plate steel. I had started making these change plates just because it was free weight. And you can see I never got around to finishing it. Like the, the surface is still pitted and oxidized. I generally smoothed out the edges so it wouldn't cut my fingers. And I got a perfect 50 millimeter hole uh, milled out right there. So it, it fits like a glove on a, on a good calibrated bar. And these, I think of them as five kilograms, but because I never actually finished them, they actually weigh a little bit more, like 5.8 kilograms. Most of the time, making something myself is a better idea. It's cheaper. I enjoy the process of making it, and I can get exactly what I want. I don't have to compromise with anything. But uh, right now, the problem I'm having is that the bars and the attachment I have for my cable machines are kind of limited. I have multiple handles, like independent handles that are nice. These are cloth with a very fat grip. I like those a lot. But when it comes to my other stuff, like with my cambered bar, there's nothing wrong with this except it's not quite wide enough. If I want to do curls on this comfortably, and I'm doing like wider curls, if I go here, that's basically shoulder width. So what I always end up doing is actually grabbing the bald ends here and having my index fingers hanging over the edges so I can kind of get the, the angle I want. So I've been wanting to get something wider anyway, especially because if I want to do straight bar curls so I can get some more pronation in the bicep, the only two bars I have for the cable machines that are straight is this short stubby one, which again, it's only narrow curls, or I have this one. But this was a cheap lap bar I got for free with some deal I made a while back. It's plenty strong, but it's hollow, pretty lightweight, uh, but it's also not wide enough. This thing here at the bend, again, if I have my pinkies right on the bend here, that's basically shoulder width apart, maybe an inch or two wider than shoulder width apart. But when I max out the, the grip width, you can see that it's not super ultra wide. And even when I'm doing curls, I typically want to get a little bit wider, but then it starts going up on this curve and I, I get less pronation in the bicep. So the, the only way I can get a straight bar curl is by stopping here. And that's, again, it's just not very wide. I have some leftover material from that lat tower I just built for the customer. And I am going to just make a few odds and ends, things that are very simple, very cheap, very easy, takes 20 minutes to make, but I'll get many years of good use out of it. Now, I would love to pretend like I had a highly organized workshop, but I do not. I, uh, when I'm between projects for a while, I will break down and clean up my workshop, but basically as soon as I start working on stuff, it gets pretty messy again because I'm less focused on stopping what I'm doing and putting stuff away and cleaning up and I'm more focused on just getting stuff done. One of the things I got was solid steel rod. This is actually one inch solid steel bar and I get six meters or about 20 feet of that for what's equivalent to like 20 bucks, 20 US dollars. And there's no tax on top of that. That's the total price, it's like $20. So essentially it's about one US dollar per foot of this one inch solid bar. So I'm gonna use this bar to probably make a few different handles of different lengths. I can also just heat it and bend it if I wanna make my own cambered bar. All right, first little bit. This is just three different lengths, 51 centimeters. So that happens to be what was left over. So 51, 75, and 100. I think I'll primarily use these just for the straight bar, but I'm gonna put a little plate at the end of every single one so I could also get a, a real wide neutral grip 
on each bar if I want to. I just cut these out. All I did was took some of that, that quarter inch flat bar. I drilled three holes side by side and then cut them out. So I have these little square pieces of quarter inch flat bar with holes cut. I'm actually gonna uh, expand these holes out a little bit larger and then I'll smooth the edges off, make them rounded so they don't you know catch or cut you. Uh, then I'll weld these directly onto each bar to hook the cable to. All right, I got those three bars done. I actually decided I'm not gonna add the, the end pieces, those, those neutral grip handles yet. I'm just going to have the bars as they are, just straight barbells. See how I like them once I have them in rotation and I've tried them out. I might decide that I wanna add a slight curve to one or turn one into a different type of cambered bar. And then maybe if I'm finding that I need it, I'll either make an entire another bar with the neutral grips or I'll just add the neutral grips to these bars. In the meantime, let me get my stuff set up here. All right, I'll try these out. So I haven't even removed the mill scale from most of these bars. I just uh, rounded off and smoothed out the ends. So again, won't cut my palms or anything. No jagged random pieces on the end. And then have these eyelets and that's it. Just a solid straight bar with eyelets attached and then smoothed out so there's no rough pieces. But let me try here. If I want to do rows, Maximum grip. Yeah, that feels awesome actually. That is awesome being able to get my hands not only wider, but they're also not curved towards me. I still have that nice barbell grip. It feels much more like doing rows with a barbell. Maximum grip. Yeah, that's awesome. That's way better. Now, I'm gonna grab this, these shorter ones and try them for uh, barbell curls over here. Yeah, that's way better. It's even wider than my current cambered bar, which is actually about where I try to get my hands anyway. With this, I can keep my hands uh, upright, more supinated grip, but then also get them about one finger width wider. So that's even better. Go ahead and give this a try. This is a maximum grip width on the 75 centimeter bar. Yeah, that's awesome. Keep my, my wrist supinated with a nice wide grip, hands a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. That feels awesome. All right, that's a, that's a good result. But now I've got this bar, this straight bar that is uh, the shortest one I've made, but it's wider. It's a good in-between. It's wider than this, than this narrow bar, but it's just slightly narrower than the straight portion of this lap bar. Then I've got this one here, which as you can see, it's basically like when I typically take my hands, I put my middle finger over this, this corner, but it means my hand has to come down a little bit. Well, if I were to take that same grip width and just turn my hands up, that's how wide this is. So it's, it's basically just bending the edges up and having the same grip width that I usually use with this for, uh, for barbell rows, like cable rows. And then I've got the wide boy, which at full width is a little bit wider than even the, the very ends of this lap bar at the widest section. So it allows me to not only do pull downs, that are a little bit wider than this allows me to do it, but uh, it keeps my hands rotated up so I can actually get more of a expansion, more of a stretch. Yeah, just these three basic bars and three different lengths gives me way more options. And these are 100 centimeters, this is 75, this is about 50, so it's 225 total. That's a little less than eight feet. So at less than eight feet, this costs less than $8 to make, basically. 
I guess if we add these little bits of scrap that I use, this flat bar that I have from a long time ago for the eyelets, I guess we could round it up and say it cost me $8 to make all three of these bars, which obviously uh, gives me a much more heavy duty, much more long lasting result for way less money.